Hi, this is Liu Yuan. This is Zhao Jianyu. Today, we want to introduce to you a model to recognize leaves from different species using the machine learning algorithm Convolutional Neural Network. Automating plant recognition, which classifies plants into correct species, is not only useful for botanists who devote to plant conservation, but also valuable for non-expert people working in plant-related industries such as pharma and food supply. As leaf is the most commonly used attribute in plant recognition, our project intends to build a plant classifier based on leaf images. A potential difficulty in our project is the subtle differences between species in the same class. Such differences can be even challenging to human experts. Moreover, we expect image quality is going to create difficulty in feature extraction, like the noise in background or variation in lightness. In this slide, we want to briefly introduce the concept of CNN. A convolutional neural network is composed of four major types of layers. The convolutional layer is the core building block. Its parameters consist of a set of learnable filters that activate when it detects some specific type of features at some spatial position in the input. The pooling layer is a form of nonlinear downsampling. The pooling layer serves to progressively reduce the spatial size of the representation to reduce the number of parameters and amount of computation in the network. RELU is the abbreviation of rectified linear units. It increases the nonlinear properties of the decision function and of the overall network without affecting the receptive fields of the convolution layer. Finally, after several convolutional layer and max polling layers, the higher level reasoning in the neural network is done via fully connected layers. Neurons in the fully connected layers have full connections to all activations in the previous layer, and seen in regular neural networks. We get our dataset from LeafSnap, a mobile app which helps identify tree species from photographs of their leaves. Its developers released their dataset online, which used 20 species from it, with largest numbers of images. The name of the 20 species and the number of pictures is listed in the table. For each species, we randomly choose 80% of the pictures to be the training set, and the rest 20% to be the validation set. Here are some sample pictures from the dataset. As you can see, they vary in quality a lot. Each picture contains varying amount of blur, noise, illumination patterns, shadows, etc. Some pictures are of high quality and are taken from flattened leaves. Some are taken by mobile devices in outdoor environments. In this project, we use the library Keras with TensorFlow backend. Keras is an open source neural network library designed to enable fast experimentation with deep neural networks. We use the two methods in this project. The first is to build a completely new model of convolutional neural network to train and test the data. The second is to adapt from the pre-trained model ResNet50 to extract features and then train a support vector machine to classify the data. To pre-process the data, we use PIL library to crop and resize the pictures. The original pictures are of various sizes, but most of them are around 800 times 635. After cropping and resizing the pictures, we get all of the pictures of sizes 80 times 80. The layers of the model we built is shown and the results are displayed in this slide. The loss, which specifies how the network training penalizes the deviation between the predicted and true labels, reduces greatly and the accuracy of predicting pictures using the model we construct increases greatly during the training. After seven or eight epochs, the accuracy of validation set stays around 83%. The reason why accuracy does not increase anymore after reaching 83% is probably due to the nature of the leaves. Some species which are close to each other may truly share very similar shape, color, and texture which makes it harder for the network to correctly predict the label. 
For example, some pictures from species Austria virginiana seem to be very similar to those from species Diospyros virginiana. Our second method is using transfer learning technique. Transfer learning is another way to make use of the power of deep convolutional neural networks. It's particularly useful when the data set is not large enough. Instead of training a network from scratch, one can employ a convolutional network that is pre-trained on a very large data set as an initialization or a fixed feature extractor. The simplest way of extracting features by convolutional network is replacing its last fully connected layer by a new linear classifier, such as support vector machine or softmax. The activations of all the hidden layers before the classifier is the features. One can also extract features from an intermediate layer, as convolutional network features are more generic in early layers and more original data sets specific in later layers. ResNet stands for Residual Network. Residual Network is proposed by researchers at Microsoft Research. It won the ImageNet large-scale visual recognition challenge in 2015. It is constructed by repeating the macro architecture building block shown at the right. One of the major differences between plain ConfNet and ResNet is the inputs of a lower layer are made available to a node in a higher layer in ResNet. Such structure successfully solves the problem of vanishing gradient, so that it's possible to train significantly deeper networks. We choose ResNet 50 over VGG because it has deeper architecture, but a smaller model size and complexity. Finally, we train a multi-class support vector machine on the feature vectors. With the best parameter set, we got a text accuracy of 99%, which is very impressive. This is out of our expectation because our data set is not quite similar to the original data set used in the challenge, which contains a thousand categories of objects that we encounter in everyday life. On the right is a visualization of the feature vectors. We can see vectors of same species tend to cluster together, which makes support vector machine able to separate them. There are three things we can do in future. First is data augmentation. Data augmentation can be used to increase the size of data by such as rotating and flipping the images. Such strategy is useful to both improve the performance of the neural network and also reduce the possibility of overfitting. The second thing is to include more leaf species. By increasing the number of leaf species, we want to test how ResNet50 and SVM may be affected because more similar species may be included. The third is to introduce more layers in the convolutional neural network. Due to the energy and time consumed for computation, the model we built is a very shallow network with very limited number of layers, so we can also add more layers in the model to improve the performance. That's all for our project. Thank you for watching this video.